Oh, wait a minute. I'm in completely the wrong scene. Ah, that looks better. Except maybe we don't need these. There. Okay. And so... We are here just to discuss potential builds. Uh, the game needs to load faster. There. That'll probably do it. Okay. Also, as I mentioned in the description, I'm testing the uh, DVR mode feature thingy that someone brought up the other day. So you should be able to rewind this stream to the beginning. Okay. So, the last two games that I've done have been, uh, let's see. I've looked something like this. And then uh, the climate minerals can be whatever. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so we're going to just discuss a few different build options. I'm going to be playing Warlock again, uh, giving the game a real... putting it through its paces before I come back to this. But I keep thinking about different builds that I can beat this difficulty with. Because I really want to crush this thing. So, I have three builds in particular that I want to discuss and just get feedback and comments on what you all think of them um, and uh, which one you think is the most likely to work. But first, the last two games that I played, I did... I did Death with Sage Master, Specialist, uh, Archmage, and Conjurer. So I was a big summoner Death Mage. And that was the closest I think I've come to winning on these particular settings. Starting off with an extremely fast out of the gate Shadow Demons. And between uh, Archmage giving me more spell casting and Specialist and Conjurer giving me a big discount on them, I was able to just kind of pump them out. Uh, Halflings plus Sage Master Specialist gave me research speed that actually kept me ahead of the AIs almost all game. It was really good. I had a couple of early mistakes. I lost a stack of Shadow Demons, and I remember saying at the time that if I lost the game, it would probably be because I lost that stack. But I also had a bunch of ba rather bad luck, particularly with all those nodes that I cleared out and found nothing but artifacts when I wanted pretty much anything else. And uh, just how many enemy wizards were running nature, nature and death, so that they were immune to all of my spells but they had petrify effects, which is kind of the weakness of death. I mean, death is immune to almost everything, but their resistance is actually rather low, so they're actually highly susceptible to petrify. So, there was definitely some bad luck in that game. The same build, just done again, might just work. Uh, playing it slightly better. The game before that, I had tried life. I had tried life with a touch of chaos to make the most ridiculous slingers, like heroism. I think I, I think I might have got adamant on them. I don't remember, but I know I got fl uh, flame blade on them, and they just they they just hit like a truck. They were unstoppable right up until they stopped working altogether because all the enemies ran nothing but magicians. So. So let's get into the three builds I'm thinking about. But first, what are the three things that the build has to be able to do to be viable? Because I really think that a build has to be able to do three specific things. Early game. I have to have the ability to expand rapidly in the early game. They have to be able to overcome magicians. That's really the entirety of the mid game is just I have to be able to beat magicians because the AI only has one strategy put 
stacks of magicians in every single city. That's it. That's the AI's plan. I mean, they'll put some summons in, too. They'll make some summons in. But really, that's the only thing it does. And every... I mean, even trolls have magicians now. There's no getting around it. So you have to be able to beat masked magicians. Hey, how's it going? Three. The late game is high-end summons. That's that's it. If a pile, if the enemy can send six sky drakes into your lands and you cannot stop that, you lose the game. That's that's it. So those are the three things the build has to do. It has to have a fast early game, some mid-game answer to magicians. And then it has to end the late game, be able to handle the very rare summons. You, you just have to be... The, the AI can just have so many resources. They can just summon so much garbage. You have to have an answer to it. Ah. Oh, that's nice. All right. So the first build I'm thinking about... All right, let's try to pull the pieces together here. It's the idea of a... Yeah, no, heroes, I'm sorry. I tried heroes with the halflings. I just don't think heroes are workable. I just I just don't think that they're, they're viable right now. You, they'll die. You, you'll get into a fight with an... You, first of all, they have to be able to level, which is hard enough to do. Because you have to take them into all these dangerous battles in layers and nodes. You have to be able to crack the layers and nodes before the AI takes them all. And then, you know, they level up some. And then you have to risk going into battle with an enemy wizard who can probably just make their heads explode with their mind. In any of a hundred fascinating ways. There's just way too many spells that will just kill a hero. So... Yeah. It, it, if, if, if I built completely around heroes, I might be able to make them work. But the problem with heroes is that you only get to have six of them at most, and they cannot, they, they just, they can't be in enough places at once. Your build has to be more than that. So, first idea is sorcery with either draconians or dark elves. And here's how the build basically goes together. So, sorcery, a whole bunch of it, is pretty hard to deal with in the late game, assuming you can make it that far. It has, an, it has answers to quite a few different problems. My early game is going to be kind of weak. That's the downside to this build. Um, in a vacuum. We can use some of these to try to improve that a little bit. But uh, we probably want specialist at the very least. And, uh, yeah. You know what's interesting? I think that Omniscient actually grants more research this way than Sage Master. It's kind of interesting. Hmm. I think you need Archmage to make this work. And, of course, you need the Mirren to make this work. So that's already down to nine. So why sorcery? Well, like I said, the beginning of the game, you'll be a little bit weak. But, here's what sorcery can do. It answers magicians very thoroughly. Counter magic, invisibility, especially on a flying unit, like a doom drake or a nightmare. Magic immunity, and eventually sky drakes, but that's pretty late game. Um, I think this is viable. The Dark Elves, unfortunately, their reproduction is slow, and you're going to have a sl uh, your your weakness to this build is your early game. 
But... Dark Elves already have a naturally invisible unit, which is a, is a plus. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I know. It, it doesn't have particularly fast research. You could give away another book for Omniscient, and that would probably help, but then you're down to eight books. And you're no longer guaranteed, you know, you... you like the last game when I was in death and I couldn't get Demon Lords because <laughs> I didn't have ten books, I only had eight. Yeah. Units that can move quick, can shoot down airs. Yep. Uh, well, the Doom Drake is very fast. It can fight air and flying. The really nice thing about Doom Drakes is that their weakness is a low resistance, but you can put resist magic on them, which covers that for a very, very low price. So the Doom Drake is highly viable. I, honestly, of the two, I think that the I think that the Draconians are faster. I think that they cover the early game a little bit better. You can probably find a Dark Elven City. There's always a Dark Elven City somewhere. Uh, and pick that up. For Warlocks and Nightmares. You can even make some Settlers and spread it around. I think that the Draconian is the strongest start. Hey, Necro. Still sick, huh? I hope you get over that soon. Alright. Build 2. I'm actually leaning towards this one. This one's a little bit... Well, you'll see. So, I give up largely on the concept of having good late game magic. First of all. In fact, I pretty much give up on having good magic. Warlord? Tactician, not for heroes, just for the plus one defense on my units. I'm gonna take some nature. I'm gonna take omniscient. Let me see. I need at least one death book. Hold on, will I get this recipe right? Power research. Gold. Gold. Okay. And at this point, I have two picks that I can put wherever I want. And I'm probably going to want to take... Doubles the chance of the wizard. Let's see. Quadruples the chance of mercenaries. Hero offer to join might be a higher level than normal. Not bad. Charismatic, though, I think is the thing to take. That'll get you out of some wars, potentially, for what that's worth, but it also halves the cost. And really, you just want another nature book. Okay, let me see if this works. Okay, there it is, transmute. That was the important thing. That was exactly the number of books. Okay, this build... You have Transmute, and you can get it extremely early, and that is critical. You will have Web and Sprites, both critical. You need Nature's Eye, because you need something for spell research, and that'll be enough. And uh, after that, I don't know, Call Centaurs is okay, but Transmute is w what you're really after. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's what this build excels at, because this is Lizardmen. Now, why Lizardmen? And I did spend a lot of time trying to m figure out a way to make Barbarians work, or, uh, you know, some of the other races, but uh, I think it's Lizardmen, and here's why. You move across water, you have the best settlers in the game, and they have the... Don't they have a boost to their population growth? I thought they did. I th thought that they had a bonus to their population growth. They have extra hit points, which is interesting. Hmm. Anyway, they're better at making settlers than anyone else. 
and that's worth a lot. And they have javelins. Okay. The idea behind this build, between Warlord, Tactician, all the stuff that you saw there, I will have... And, and speeding straight to Javelins, which are not late game like Paladins. They're fairly early game. You can start getting them out as well as speeding out Settlers like crazy. You want to take, you want to have the strongest early game possible. Why nature and not life? Population growth from Omniscient. And two particular spells. Transmute. Adamant. Javelins. That's, that's an extremely powerful combination. Having the adamant on them is as good as casting flaming sword on every single unit. And it gives two defense on top of that. And two, there's this nature spell that has no business being in nature. It does not fit at all. It's an ice storm or blizzard. It deals damage to a tile that you're not in combat with. Why does nature have a flame strike out of combat? I don't know. As you could justify it as weather manipulation, but it, it's really not in tone with them. But it's a critical spell for this build. I cannot guarantee that I can get it. Which makes this a little bit dicey, but it devastates most magicians. It's not very good against magicians that have extra hit points, which some races do have, but for most magicians, and there'll be somebody in the game that, w that will have elven magicians or high men magicians or something, uh, a couple blizzards devastate the tile, and then I can attack. The javelineers will just, just tear up the world until magicians come into play, and then there's that. It also gives me sprites, which are really good early game, and web, and a few other nice spells. Uh, maybe the death book and the life book would give me something too, I don't know. But the idea behind this is the strongest early game possible. Take over and conquer as much as I can, including other races, with three other magicians and neutral towns. There will be other races that I will conquer and kind of hope that I find something I can use in eight, late game. I just want to have conquered so much territory that I snowball out of control. We've learned from the past two games that defending is just not an option. I'll spend, I'll grind, stop advancing, I'll grind to a complete halt and spend all my time trying to defend my cities. And they'll just take the cities and break them anyway, despite that. So this would be sheer raw aggro. I wish I could do it with Barbarians, but Berserkers are just terrible. They just possession, black sleep, ev everything. Everything. Get you can cast resist magic on a Berserker, and it can still be possessed. <laughs> like, it's... I can't play with that. Uh, green teleport gate, you're talking too high-end. You're talking high-end magic. This this only has five books. I will get some late-game magic. And being in green, I have more late-game summons than any other school of magic, which is actually something I've considered a lot. I'm very likely, between these books, trades, and layers and nodes, to find something. Maybe Great Worms, maybe Colossi, maybe uh, Behemoths. I might get Earthgate. I'll, you know, I might get uh, Entangle and Call Lightning, or I might not. It's it's really dicey. I don't like how unpredictable the late game is. It's mostly about snowballing through the early and mid game. Realm Grinder? Uh, we're not talking about Realm Grinder right now. Um, yeah, I know that my build is not optimal, so I went and looked it up, and it turned out to be the exact 100% same build that I'm using with only one detail that caught me off guard. Um, 
that I didn't even notice when I looked it up. Somebody had to explain to me that the artifact played a factor in how faction coins worked. So, like, a week ago, I started using that, too. <laughs> so, I assure you that right now, my Realm Grinder get build is... If it's not optimal, it is right on there. Like, right up to it. Yeah, yeah, Ice Storm War Warlocks are another brand of magician. A scarier brand of magician. I think it is. I think the plus one defense is significant because this build is going to have a lot of units. Like, it's just going to throw a lot of Shaman and Javelineers and a few Turtles. There, It's not that there won't be heroes or that I won't use heroes. Heroes will exist. Heroes will be used in one way or another. Whether it's to defend cities or actually do something. I mean, a hero with leadership and uh, the ranged attack boost would be hard to ignore. But yeah, you could argue up for replacing Tactician for one more spell book to make it less dicey. This is this build is just designed to have the strongest early game I could give it. I wish I could work Famous in there, but you you got to have that book to get to guarantee transmute cuz you have to have adamant on your javelins. Okay. Need quick expansion to get to the dungeons. Well, again, the sprites in that build are this build here are really good for conquering early layers and nodes, taking them real early. And then once you start getting piles of javelins, you can take a lot of things with a pile of javelineers. The really high end nodes, though, there's yeah. This is that was that was the Zergling Rush build, <laughs> basically. You have to do enough damage in your early game, because your late game is going to be kind of up in the air. Okay. Build number three. So the last game that I did, as I mentioned gave me the ability to stay ahead of the curve on research the entire game. With halflings. It's these two, and you need Archmage. I mean, I suppose you could try to use Spellweaver instead. All non-summoning, non-item creation, overland spells. But it's two picks, and Archmage is one pick, and it works on summons, and it works on items, and it's 50% instead of 33, so... It, it even works in battle. I, I, honestly, I, I don't know why anyone would pick Spellweaver. I'm sure Cerevi can explain how this is a hundred times better than I think it is, but... I, I take Archmage over it. <laughs> for for all those reasons. So, you need Archmage to have the casting skill to keep up with your research. Otherwise, you'll research all these wonderful spells that you can't cast because you don't have the casting skill. And that's no fun. Okay. So, with this as the basis, I could go high into any single type of magic and get to the late game before them, or I could try a combination. The important thing about this is that I'm always ahead of the AI in spell research. I could try a Conjurer build again in green, and uh, green has good summons all the way through that have better resistances particularly since you get that global that boosts your resistance so uh, green is totally totally viable you'll definitely have a very rare summon of some kind that'll be good ideally colossi because they're immune to everything and they throw rocks and they're hard to kill um 
you could do personally I'm not a fan of chaos these days not by itself you can splash it into other things by itself not so great but uh, you could try it mix it in with channeler maybe alchemy okay admittedly you'd find yourself with like oh really oh hmm okay I don't remember that restriction but okay fine you could mix it in with channeler or alchemy your choice so that you have even more burning and just try to burninate everything possibly throw spearmen at them just like here fight this spearman surprise flame strike not a fan you could try to do the death thing I did last time put the conjure in life is interesting life is interesting because you can potentially since you're in halflings already you can potentially get that very strong early game. Not as good as when I splashed Chaos for Flame Sword, but still a very strong one. And this is extremely illogical. Because if you take Conjurer, all you have at the start is Guardian Spirits. Then you get Unicorns. Then you get angels. Okay, you can work with angels, but you're pretty far in the game. Then you get archangels. And those are amazing. Conjurer would be a very counterintuitive thing to pick in life. But it would give you a payoff in the late game. Yeah. And of course, it's also sorcery as an option. But, uh, yeah. Those are the three bi builds I'm contemplating. I'd love to see a lot of comments and uh, discussion. There's a lot of options. Like, Master of Magic has more options in the character creation than any other game. Than any other game. Of this type. I'm sure somebody will find an RPG with 500 classes and 6,000 builds per class. But uh, for a 4X game, it is honestly overwhelming considering how much you can choose from here. I think the sorcery thing is good, particularly with uh, Doom Drakes. Invisible Doom Drakes. Would, would absolutely devastate those cities full of magicians. As long as you're not fighting a fellow blue mage, but at least the specialist will make it harder to dispel. Let me see. Yeah. That's what you end up with. is kind of interesting to uh, the nature lizards for very very fast aggro or leaning heavily on magic heavily heavily on magic with uh, halflings again and picking one of the five schools I think you want to just spec purely into one with this particular build because it's, it's because you're leaning on specialist for some of it I think that that's just too good to give up <laughs> yeah yeah and that that chaos book that time was a pickup off of a a node or something early on yeah, the death versus death fights are the only thing. Like, I really feel like this build should win the game. This was a very powerful build, but everyone was running was running zombies. Everyone was running shadow demons and undead, and it's like, well, none of my spells work on any of this. 
Even my own uh, darkness buffs were buffing their side as much as my own. It was terrible. And then they all had petrify. God, they all had petrify. It was a really, it was really bad luck. Hmm. See, now I want to start playing. But no. No, not yet. I'm going to play Warlock first. We'll come back to this. And by then, I'll have made up my mind on one of the builds of, you know, but go ahead, throw feedback at me. You might very well be the one to help me make my decision on this. There are definitely options. I generally don't go for the things that cost two picks. I generally avoid them because they're just so expensive. They eat so deep into you. But, uh, I can definitely make an argument. And I really don't like Guardian. I mean, I know it's, it's, the first thing is it's two picks, but the other thing is this. It, it, it's, we, we, well, as I already mentioned, every time I try to defend my cities, I grind to a halt, unable to advance. I stagnate, just put building units in all my cities and trying to defend them. And I'm sitting there stagnating, stagnating, stagnating. My enemies are growing more and more powerful. And then they walk in and crack all my cities anyway. They just keep walking in and taking things. Despite my best efforts. I just don't think that defense... I think that defense is naturally a bad option. It's just, it's just bad. If this were... If this were offensive that I would get a bonus whenever I'm attacking an enemy's city, I would have to give pause and consider it seriously. Seriously consider it. Yeah, I've already discussed why I'm not a big fan of the hero builds right now. I just don't see a hero build working. And I love alchemy. I really do. I'm always happy if I have alchemy, but I never can give up the book to take it. It's sad, because it's such a good power. Yes, but... Caveat to that. Caveat to that. Yes, they summon a zombie. The zombie can see my units, and the enemy wizard can target them with a lightning bolt or whatever. But all of the magicians cannot shoot them. All of the magicians are stuck. Like, they can still do their spell casting, which is obnoxious enough. Like, it's not that they're completely hosed, but they're not able to shoot. And magicians... They hit like a truck when they shoot, especially the high men and the warlocks. They just hit so intensely hard when they shoot. They can wipe out half your army before your army gets a turn. So, uh, yeah. The undead thing is a problem. Uh, just, just summon a zombie, see through it. A lot of cities tend to start with nine units in the city, though. So they can't summon the zombie turn one. I place counter magic on the battlefield before I have killed anything. And magicians have a really hard time getting their spells through counter magic. They'll wear the counter magic out, so, uh, but it'll block like all of their low end crappy black sleeps and things. The way you deal with counter magic is you cast really big spells <laughs> that <laughs> that just kind of oh, force their way through it. Hi, Mona. No, I'm not actually playing Caster of Magic. I was just discussing builds. Also, it's over. <laughs> I've said all I wanted to say. We're just kind of yakking for a few minutes. Yeah. No, you do have a point, though. It's, 
I think I can play around it, but it's still playing around it. Really the greatest fear I have with that build, even running specialization, I'm not going to be able to afford to add the spell locks to every invisible doom drake. And anybody with this spelling wave can just go and half my doom drakes are visible now. So, yeah, the Dark Elves, they have a naturally invisible unit. And I was contemplating other builds with the Dark Elves to try to make use of the uh, naturally invisible unit when it comes out. Weirdly, of all the schools of magic, life magic and Dark Elves. If you're not doing sorcery for focus magic, then life magic. And I know that sounds really weird, but, well, it, it is really weird. I'm trying to remember all the reasons why I concluded this would have been the best for Dark Elves, and I've never actually tried life Dark Elves. I know heroism was part of it. Um, Stream of Life would actually... Because because the big problem with the Dark Elves is how slow their population growth is. Stream of Life is the only spell in the game that makes your population growth go up. So suddenly, you know, you'd counter that. You could also try to pick Omniscient in a nature book. And that would, that would also help offset their uh, growth rate problems. Yep, there is a ghost, and you can also get the pumpkin. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, the thing is... That was part of the problem where I was stagnating defensively. It, it helped me survive, but I stopped moving forward. I stood there, casting black clouds and summoning stuff in cities while my enemy conquered my world. Like, literally, she wiped out, like, another enemy wizard. She just kept getting more powerful. She teched up to her very rare summons and started summoning demon lords while I was sitting around trying to defend my cities. I, I, I really want to avoid... I really want to avoid the trap of... of... defending. Yeah, there's no hope. That, that thing. Two games in a row, invisible units started a war. There is nothing I can do to prevent that. It's just bullshit. A nature sorcery build. Hold on a second, we'll contemplate this. I... How would this work? Hold on. There's a few pieces of strong synergy in here. I mean, obviously, I could make focus magic cockatrices that can petrify with a shot. I'm not a big fan of cockatrices. They're kind of fragile. And that's a fair investment of mana, but it is a good, a good combo. It is a very good combo. Let's see. What could we do? What could we do? If we picked up Omniscient, we'd have a pretty good boost to research and population. All right, all right. Let's say we did that. Well, how much of a research boost are we talking? 714. Ah, it surpasses Sage Master. Okay, all right, all right. You can't use Specialist because you're split. Fair enough. I wonder if these stack. Hmm. We have some decent summons, and we're talking about using a summon. But I think I'd rather go with Archmage. Let's see, we could have Transmute. 
Or we could guarantee the cockatrices. I think since we're building around that, that's what we'd want. Okay, some added research. You'd end up with... Hmm... I think overall we'd call centaurs. Okay, then you come over here. See, so we've guaranteed both pieces of the cockatrice focus magic. You take that, and I guess resist magic. Now here's a question. Aether binding. Ah, but counter magic, dispelling wave, or of majesty is all right too. We have a really good selection of uncommons. And then the question would be, what race would this be? Earth lore is fun, but I don't get enough use out of it. I'm usually pretty good with my magic spirits. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Time stop would be great. Unfortunately, with only six spell books in each school, you can't guarantee any... Pr You're going to get a couple very rare spells. You're just going to get a couple of each. And then that's going to be it. Like, yeah, we're only running five of each. Yeah, we're... We can't count. We're probably... Any very rare spell you name, we're probably not going to get. If you say time stop, we probably won't get time stop. If you say, uh, you know, I don't know... Colossi, we probably won't get Colossi. But we will get something. Alright, let's see. If it were to be a halfling build, we'd have a lot of research. You'd have sprites, and then the cockatrices would give you your early game. You wouldn't need to use the slingers, which is good, because the slingers would suck. You could make magicians and focus magic them, though. With the Omniscient giving you a, I think it was a 30% boost to research, this would magnify this, and you'd pro, you'd, you'd, even without specialist, you could probably keep up on research speed. Let me see, Clackons, not a lot of synergy there. High men. I really feel like Conjurer should be part of this. I mean, they have the most dangerous magicians on the Arcanus plane. They have Paladins, which are just the best unit on the Arcanus plane. They produce buildings faster. They're, they're all around good. But they have no particular synergy to this build. I'm not sure what race you'd go with. It doesn't really predispose itself to anything in particular. It kind of works with everything. I think the only thing that you want is high magic. So you want to be able to make a wizard's guild and the like. Um, as many religious buildings as possible and so on. So yeah, halfling. Halfling would be good. You're not focus. You're not really needing their military, so their non-military, you know, so their military buildings being blocked doesn't hurt you. Yeah, I'd say halfling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. But you just can't help it. You step on some invisible ant and suddenly they're they're all at war with you because they had an alliance. Yeah, you don't get to pick your wars. Your wars pick you. 
At least one of the builds has char charismatic in it. For what that's worth. I don't know. Anyway. Lots to think about. Let me see. How long is it going to take me before I play this? I'm going to be playing Warlock. Um, I'm going to be jacking the size up to the limit and pushing the difficulty down two steps. And honestly, I can't predict. I'll have all six alternate planes open. I really have no idea how long that game is going to take to play. But as soon as that's done, I think we'll have a new patch from CeraVe that'll probably turn something... Something will probably turn inside out on me. <laughs> something, somewhere, to throw a wrench in all of our best laid plans. Nonetheless, we'll make our plans. Oh man, do they ever. So, go ahead, leave your thoughts in comments. Oh, that's what I've been thinking of. Literally, that's... I keep thinking about it while I'm at work, while I'm <laughs> all the time. Like, hmm, because I really want to beat this difficulty on this Landsats. It's somehow become something of an obsession with me. <laughs> anyway, a little later tonight, I'll throw out a little announcement about, uh, I'm looking for, so for somebody to play, uh, the new Wings of Liberty co-op thing in StarCraft 2, and I'll get the times and everything. I'll staple that all together later tonight. Oh, let's see. If it comes to if they're unwanted ward, you can never trust diplomatics. Yes, the diplomancers are pure evil. <laughs> no, it's too late. He can't spy on our strategy meeting. It's it's too late. It's already over. <laughs> All right. Hey, you can try the new DVR mode. Theoretically, you can rewind to the beginning of this stream. Anyway, until next time and every time, this is Hadrick signing off. Bye.